Welcome to Moments with Mary Ann. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest, Sherriana Boyle. And she's here today to share with us her book, Emotional Detox, Seven Steps to Release Toxicity and Energize Joy. Now, Sherriana is an international emotional detox coach, author of eight books, has been featured in over 85 articles, and is a featured presenter for renowned organizations such as 1440 Multi-University and many more. She's also an adjunct psychology professor and a featured expert in Simple Habit App, and she's known as a host of the Emotional Detox radio show on HealthyLife.net. So let's welcome to the show, Sherriana Boyle. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, what an honor it is to have you here to talk about this book. We were just reconnected through a friend, and I just love this book and couldn't pass up the opportunity for us to have this discussion. Ah, thank you. (laughs) Well, you probably get that a lot because your book really does help people. And gosh, couldn't we use some emotional detox now, right? Yeah, I I feel like the entire world is going through one, to be honest with you. Whether they know it or not. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Most of us, you know, are kind of just kind of bouncing around with one thing after another that we're being hit with. And so I love for you to explain when we start with this, you know, like what inspired you to write this book? What even got you started on the emotional detox path? Well, before I started writing emotional detox, I wrote a book called Mantras Made Easy. And when I wrote that book, I had some really solid mantra practices going on. And once you start researching mantras, you realize that is it's quite a devotional spiritual practice. And I was fully in. So I had all these mantras going on and I was going through this 90-day practice. And then the book was published. And then after that, it just sort of came really quick out of nowhere. I thought, I'm going to, I'm going to publish a book on emotional detox. And it was like, what, what the heck am I saying? I just wrote a book and I just published and I really should give myself a break right now. Not many authors kind of jump right back in again. We usually take a little bit of time and it just kept coming this strong feeling like this was the direction that I needed to go in. And I believe, honestly, I believe that it came from that mantra practice. Well, how empowering is that? And so what is, if we look at emotional detox, I mean, all of us are kind of going, gosh, I need that and then some right now. But what does that really mean? That's a good question. And that's why I wrote the book, because I wanted to figure that out myself. What exactly is an emotional detox? And What it is in terms of what I've presented is it's a foundation for a new way of viewing our emotions. And our emotions, many of us up until now, have been taught that they could cause problems, right? You feel a certain way and that doesn't feel good and it can wreak havoc in your life. And so therefore, we've been taught to kind of regulate or manage or cope with what we're feeling emotionally. And what I learned is very often those are reactions to emotions. They're not actually emotions themselves. So when it comes to an emotional detox, what you are detoxing are how you've been reacting, which is termed under toxicity, toxic negative thoughts or coping mechanisms to feeling your emotions. In other words, how have you been resisting them? So it's the resistance that we are releasing so that you can actually experience your emotions purely as is, without them being polluted by all of these negative thoughts or beliefs or attitudes or influences in your life. 
Mm, I love that. And how do we know? It's like, hey, you know what? I need to touch in and now it's time for me to really use an emotional detox. Where are some of the signs? Well, one of the signs is to notice, are you having negative or fearful thinking? So if you are, then that's a sign that there are some emotions that are looking to come up to in you to be fully processed. The other sign is your breathing. If you find that you're, you're not really getting many deep breaths or at least conscious breaths, they don't even really have to be deep, but aware, the awareness of your breath, then you could probably benefit from taking a moment to move through the steps. And also looking at triggers. And I talk a lot about triggers in the book because triggers are ways that we kind of go off balance. It's very often represented through thinking, the, the quality of our thoughts or maybe tightness in the body or constriction. And that's a sign that you're being triggered by what is happening either in front of you or around you or inside of you. And I talk about in the book that those triggers are very often memories, not just of events, but of emotions that we never allowed ourselves to fully process because we believed that we had to regulate, manage, avoid, or make them go away. We believed that that was the right thing to do. I can remember growing up and kind of feeling that way too. I think everyone you know, can look back on you know, their younger years and go, gosh, you know, I really had to manage and stuff things, you know, and how nice it would be to be in a place where you don't have to do that. Right. And it's really just begins with awareness, just noticing, oh, gee, I'm being triggered. And what does that look like when I'm being triggered? It might not look like somebody else. So I have to get to know myself. What is it like when I'm in a state of trigger? Do I get really nervous? Do I start walking a little bit quicker? Do I, do I talk faster? And also beginning to notice once you release and you feel those emotions, noticing yourself in that state And if you notice now, I tend to take more pauses when I speak. And that's because I'm in a, I'm processing and I call it a state of processing. I'm feeling and I'm speaking at the same time. But then there's times where like maybe when I'm with my kids (laughs) and I might be like, (laughs) and it'd be quick. I'm like firing at them. And then it's those moments I have to notice, oh, wait a minute there's something in me that's getting triggered. And it could be some kind of a narrative that's running in my mind, like we're going to be late and that's not good. And then, and then they're going to get behind and then they're whatever, whatever story that's running. And those stories keep us from feeling. So it begins with awareness, really noticing before and after you move through the steps, which I frame in the acronym of CLEANSE. So it's seven steps is an emotional detox. And it begins with a C and it ends with the E in the acronym of CLEANSE. Well, since you brought it up, why don't you kind of just break down what that means? And I, of course, you know, we're not going to go into great detail because it's in the book and, you mm-hmm. know, people want to get their own copy, but I'd love for you to just kind of explain what that is for our listeners. Sure. So the C, which is called clear reactivity, that is when you sort of prep your body for feeling. So I always say it's like baking a cake. Right, you gotta you gotta do the prep work. You gotta put the oven on. So C is like preheating your oven. <laughs> and there's many, many, many ways to preheat the oven and prepare your body to feel an emotion. I find it's kinder, it's gentler, it's more mindful and compassionate. And so it's some steps that you take to do that. And then you move 
to the looking inward statement. And these are statements. And you say them out loud. You don't have to say them very loud, but you say them out loud. And then you follow that with some breath work. And then E is called emit. And emit is when you add vibration. So basically at this point, I've prepped my body. I've identified what's coming up in me to be healed. That's with the second step. And then the third step is now I'm going to add some vibration in the body to facilitate the processing of those emotions. Once that occurs, you go into the next step, which is the A. And that is about, okay, now I have this releasing and I have this vibration. Where am I going to direct my attention from there? And that is that activate step. You get support in how to do that. Then it transforms into the N, which is the nourishing step, which is about really learning how to hold energy in that state. So that's another, that's a feeling state, but it's different than when you started with the beginning of the cleanse. So now you're hold, learning how to hold this vibration. And then from that state, you can move into the S, which is surrender. That is when you can really work with your free will and you can choose to release everything that's been blocking you or inhibiting you from feeling your emotions as is. And then finally, you land into the E step, which is ease. And that is just about full integration, which means I don't just choose something, I become that. So I don't just choose happiness. I am a state, a vibrational state of happiness. I love that, man. That's so, it's great because it really takes people like from beginning to end this process that they can work on a daily basis. It does. And, and I talk about it in the core, I call it the core book, Emotional Detox, because I've written other variations of Emotional Detox since then. And I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the book or not, but after I was researching for about emotions, I was hit with some real emotional trauma myself. And at that point in my life, I was like, oh man, this is, I mean, it was really, really tough. And so I was no longer just researching because pure curiosity and because I had just gone off this mantra practice and I was in a very high spiritual state, I was in something that I was now researching. So when I came up with those steps, I started to come up with them from being in a state of trauma. And I thought to myself, what the hell was I thinking? I was going to do this, this, and this. When I'm in this state, there's no way in heck I can ask people to do that kind of work in this frame of mind. So in hindsight, I got to actually watch myself move through trauma and put these steps together based on that. So when someone does an emotional detox, I know we've covered quite a bit. What are some of the things that they would expect as benefits from this? Well, you really feel it right away. You feel lighter is what I hear a lot. I feel lighter. I feel more grounded. The biggest thing is <laughs> most people, what they brought to the table, they actually don't want to have a conversation about anymore. They're ready to have a new conversation because when you gain energy from the emotions, when, they, when they're fully processed, you gain energy. And when you gain energy, you gain awareness. And when you gain awareness, you gain consciousness. So there's no way you're going to see a situation the same way anymore. Now you have a whole new viewpoint, and now you can begin to look at it from that perspective, and therefore the entire conversation and the entire focus changes, and what you gain is you gain a sense of clarity, 
and you gain a sense of calm and you realize that much of what has happened is not necessarily happening to you. It's happening for you. Mm, I love that. I love that. Well, and so when someone is doing an emotional detox, how do they know what they're detoxing or is that important? It isn't always important. I think it's the signs that you are in a trigger. I don't think you need to go back and look at every little event in your life. Sometimes people naturally do that or they might have something kind of pop in their mind just out of the whim. I just was doing an emotional detox last night with someone on the over Zoom and this image just popped into her mind that she completely forgot about. In fact, people had told her about these incidences, but she had blocked them out. All of a sudden, they it pops in. Now, Am I going to tell her to tell me more about that? No. That's just a sign that something has unearthed in her. And you don't need to get into it, but you do want to honor it. Yeah. Sometimes diving further into that can be like a hot mess. So, you know, obviously you've been, you really know what you're doing and you know how to get through all this and you're really teaching people a very healthy way to do it. Yeah. And again, I had to, I went through it myself, which helped a ton. And, uh, and since then I've helped many, many other people. And there are times where I'm like, huh, do I stick with the same cleanse? Like, really, is this really gonna, I mean, some things are really, really tough and you think, oh boy. And sure enough, it's just been so reliable and so consistent for people. It, it hasn't let me down once. So I feel like I've tested it <laughs> over and over <laughs> again, that it really does help people. And I do believe like what you just said, because you're not re-traumatizing them because you can cross that line if you go back into it again. And so it really, it's like a discipline. It keeps you on track and you have to trust it's okay. You really will unearth it. You don't have to dig it up and go through all of that again. What if somebody has a pattern and they maybe, you know, they're just getting to the point where they're realizing they, that they do have this pattern going on. And so they're going through this process. Do they continue doing the emotional detox until they get to the place where the pattern has resolved itself? Yes. Yes. I mean, the the emotional detox is designed for regular use. And when you raise energy and when you bring awareness, you have already changed a pattern. It will never be the same again, even after the first cleanse. It will never be the same again. It might show up in different ways But what happens is the intensity of the triggers go down or they don't last as long. The awareness comes quicker. And so the more you cleanse, the more you're going to catch on and say, oh, okay, here's an opportunity. I can either re-traumatize myself and bring up the past and go to my brain and think about everything and worry and problem solve and all that stuff. Or I can look at it that this as something in me is coming up to be healed and I can choose to cleanse. So I always say you really just have two choices. Either you re-traumatize yourself or you choose to heal. And in this case, it would be choosing to cleanse. I know in your book, you talk about how emotions get over-processed. I'd love for you to expand on that for our listeners. Yeah. I mean, I think about it like food, you know, when, when you over-process food and you just pour all this chemicals on it and pesticides and all that is in our food, something that was once so nutritious and good for us is now not so good for us. And it clogs up our system and our puts all this stuff in our body. And then 
and then it, 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 it impacts us physically and, and mentally. And it's the same thing I find with emotions that if you overprocess them, meaning you think about them, you worry about them, you play out in your mind over and over again. A lot of times, you know, this happens for people in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know that. (laughs) (laughs) They wake up and you're just like, what the heck was I doing to myself last night? And you know, it's funny because on my website, I, I learned how to cleanse dreams and I have a course on there. So what I'll do now is I'll wake up and I find that if I'm really rattled by a dream or I'm rattled by a night, where I just had a sleepless night, something's coming up to be healed. And I just need to give myself a little extra support. And so sometimes that means that is another sign. You asked before, how do you know when you need to cleanse or process? That would be a sign. If you're waking up a lot, you've got, it's like someone knocking on your door. Hello, (laughs) can you? Hello, you have some emotions that need to be processed. That's it. And just give them a little bit of attention. And again, it begins with the first step and it ends with the with the last step. So, you know, it's really interesting. You talk in your book also about the mindset, a detox mindset. What is that? And why would we want to have that? The mindset is... And that all emotions are good so long as you process them. I think that some of the reason people don't process their emotions is we have been taught that some emotions are good and some emotions are bad. Some are better, some are worse. And that we always want to look or be like that. And I think that's messed with us because Why would I want to feel something that is bad or doesn't make me look good or sound good? So the mindset of an emotional detox is then all emotions are good so long as you process them. There is no bad emotion. So that is a really impressive thing because a lot of times people get stuck in going, well, wait a minute, I've got all this bad emotion. What am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. And that, and that brings on reactivity. So reactivity, how I define it in the book is how you make the uncomfortable comfortable. And sometimes we even do it in ways that are quote unquote healthy. So I have discomfort. So I might say, okay, I have just, I'm I'm uncomfortable. I'm antsy. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I'm worried. What am I going to do? How can I make myself comfortable? What do I do? Okay. I'm going to get a cup of tea. Okay. I'm going to go for a walk. And that's all well and good, but I almost put that under the category of coping. And I think that's where we get sometimes a little confused. We confuse coping with processing And I find they're very different. Coping in the emotional detox mindset was never meant to be a long-term solution. So I can cope at a grocery store because I have to wear a mask and stand six feet apart from everybody else. So I'm adjusting and coping with that. But as far as processing, I would leave that grocery store And I might get in my car and say, gosh, I feel, you know, I'm noticing I'm tight and my shoulders and I white knock, you know, I feel like kind of rattled by that experience. And I might take a moment and just say, something is coming up in me, you know, how I, and that's when you go through the process and you start with step one, you got to prep your body and then you go to step two and you allow yourself to identify what was coming up in that grocery line, feeling judged, feeling fearful, feeling whatever it was, worried, paranoid, all sorts of things, right? And if I don't get hung up on the labels of them and what those labels mean, 
I can process them. But if I get hung up on, well, this means this, and this means that, and this is good, and this is bad, there's no way in heck I'm going to allow myself to go through the remaining steps. So some of that mindset is spend less time labeling and more time feeling. It's the feeling that counts. If you need to have a conversation or express yourself about what you're feeling, do it after you process, not before. I'm so glad you shared that with us because I think that, I mean, that's probably a question you get often, right? Where people are like, well, wait a minute, I've got all this feeling. What do I do with this or these thoughts, you know? Yeah. And again, it's first you have to know, and the more you cleanse, the more comfortable you become with it. And, and what ends up happening, it's, I don't know if you drink coffee or not, but, uh, I drink coffee, love coffee actually. And uh, not a lot, but I do love my morning cup of coffee. If I don't have my cup of coffee, I always feel a little off. Right. And if I don't cleanse, I feel off. It's reversed itself now. Before it was, I'm not used to this cleanse thing, right? Feeling my feelings. This is weird, right? But now it's weird not to. You really get yourself into a place where you're able to work through all this, that it becomes very odd for it not to be happening. It becomes off that you reverse it. I feel off when I'm not processing, whereas most people feel feel the reverse. They're not processing, right? And they feel off. And I, I feel off when I don't cleanse. So why don't you give us an example? Because I'm sure you have hundreds of people that, you know, connect with you and and, you know, use you for coaching services and what have you in regards to getting their cleanse done. What, what are some of the stories of the people that you see that come to you? What are some of the similarities? Well, I see things like, let's say there's a couple people living in a household together and there, there's some tension going on there. Let's between, I don't know, maybe a couple, two adults or something. And so I'll see here one person will say, well, I just try not to bother them. I try to leave them alone, get out of their space. If I see them in the kitchen, I don't go into the kitchen and this. And and that's okay, maybe for a day or two. But when you're living with someone and that's your strategy for managing the tension and the discomfort and the disconnection and the disharmony between the two of you, that eventually is going to erode at you and somebody's going to lose it, (laughs) right? So (laughs) (laughs) it's, it's going to erupt at some time and, and, and that's unfortunate because that's when things are said that are really hurtful. And that's when people hold on to things and also re-traumatize each other. So in those situations with a cleanse, for example, we'll go through the motions and we'll discover, I mean, when I'm one-on-one, I'm I'm deeper than what I'm telling you here, but very often I discover belief systems. And one belief system I find running with disconnection is, oh, I don't need anybody. I'm strong. I don't need anybody. Oh my and- gosh. Yeah. You, yeah. I'm sure you hear that story over and over again, because a lot of people have been taught that as kids, you know? Yes. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need a man. You don't need a woman, you know? Right. And, Rely on yourself. No one's yeah. going to be there for you. You know exactly, exactly. And I find that messages. So if you're if you're repeat if you have that belief system inside you somewhere, I don't need anybody. I'm I'm strong, right? Then what's going to happen? How how does this impact your relationships? And that's one of the examples. It puts a wedge there because unconsciously you push them away. You keep them at arm's length. And once you identify that, then that would be something that you would run through the cleanse. But that can only come up 
when you give yourself permission to take a look at, so you would, again, you would start that with that step one and you would, you would go through your prep because you're aware, okay, I'm feeling tense. I'm feeling uptight. I'm in this situation. And you would do that. And then you would do the statements And then once you do these statements that I lay out for you, which with some breath work, it always amazes me how this stuff comes up to the surface. It's just like it's, it's, it's there all along. It's just, you can't see it. So some of these belief systems come up to the surface and attitudes and mindsets, and they carry unprocessed emotions such as unworthiness or shame or guilt. They carry all of that with them. And so then you give yourself permission to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm choosing to release this. I don't need to identify everything. I just have enough. I just have enough to know that it's time and I'm ready and that this is for me and this is for the relationship. And this is the greater good for the planet for me to go through this process. Do you feel like one of the roadblocks you come up against with the people you work is really they're kind of maybe they're afraid to go do that inward journey and to really kind of dive down into what's keeping them in in many ways kind of stuck? I do. And I think some are skimming the surface and they're, they might, they just need to go a little bit deeper. I I find so much is in our society, the way we've been trained, much as back again in our childhoods, the way that we interpreted the events that were going on around us, how we blocked ourselves from feeling as a way of self-preservation and self-protection and as a way to take care of others. And that's another thing we've learned that other people's emotions are more important than our own and that it's somehow our job to help people feel better. But the problem is, is during that process, you end up suppressing what you feel or putting aside what you feel. You don't see the value in what you feel. That's why we do that. So from a, um, when we look at, you know, using, you know, your process as, a way to really kind of affect us, not just emotionally. How does it work with us physically too? Well, everything's connected as far as our emotions and the anatomy, the way that they travel through the body is there is that they are connected to our gut and they help when you connect your brain and your gut, you help with that emotional processing and you help with that digestive system. So our large and small intestine are impacted, our spleen, our liver, pretty much all the main organs are impacted by emotional processing. And so when you physically, at a, from a physical standpoint, I find like, for example, a lot of people that overeat or undereat, it's because they're not connected. Their, um, their emotions are cut off. And when they cut those emotions off, they also cut off their ability to feel and sense the signals between their brain and their gut. So they're literally, they're just not picking up on the cues. And then of course, that brings all sorts of reactivity because they're, they get so consumed with food and what they're eating, what they're not eating and the judgment and it turns into the cycle but if they would just take time to feel, they would naturally hook that brain gut connection up and it would allow them to become more aware of what they need. And sometimes you become more full feeling just from feeling. Sometimes I, I'm so, I'll say, I don't know if you've ever had that experience where I'd be like, they're like, okay, it's time to eat dinner. I'm like, I'm just not hungry, right? I'm just not as, I'll eat a little bit, but I don't need this big, huge meals anymore because I'm always processing my emotions. I have, I don't have that feeling like of disconnection. That's such an important example. Cause I know right now, especially because, you know, a lot of people have been isolated maybe overeating, overindulging in one area or another, 
has been on the forefront taking place. You hear about it quite often. And so to kind of look at what's really behind that, the bigger picture, I think, is really important. Yeah, I mean, it, it, emotions just have to be included with everything. I, I don't think you can leave them out, no matter if it's a physical imbalance or a mental imbalance, or there's someone is feeling a lack of purpose in their life, or they're not feeling um, a connection to the, to the bigger picture, spiritual connection. I just don't think you can leave your emotions out of the equation. And when it comes to relationships, or parenting, self-care. I mean, they're just such an important piece. Yeah. I mean, reading your book, I was so impressed that, you know, how you talk about doing the cleanse process really helps people to reset their nervous system, which then kind of resets everything else too. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And right now I'm I'm in the process of of writing a new book with emotional detox. I'm writing 135 emotional detoxes. So <laughs> my, my I <laughs> so it's been it's been interesting, but what's really been interesting is how many ways that you can reset your nervous system. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there are lots of different ways to do that. <laughs> Enough to fill a whole book, right? Exactly. I'm like, boy, I didn't know there was that many ways. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk to you again when that book is out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but you know, but it's really it's interesting because you talk about like moving from places, like being in a place of where you're just not really feeling your best and moving to that place little by little by little of joy, love whatever that better feeling is. Mm. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is I think we have this view of, of, of happy or joyful as like, I have to be, you know, I don't know, just like raising my arms in the air and be like, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. And what I find with the cleanse, when they enter that, that joy state or those higher states, is they just feel really grounded and connected and whole. I think that's the biggest, the best way I can describe it is you just feel whole. Because think about it, if, you, if you're having like the time of your life and you're like, oh, wow, I want to be like that. I want to have, and we see this so much in marketing and social media. I want to have the time of my life. I just want to be on top of the world. But then it's like, you got to keep up with that, <laughs> right? I mean, that, oh, yeah. <laughs> that, you got to keep up with that. And that, that requires energy and that requires, right? And so when you're the cleanse on the other hand, I don't have to keep up with anything. I just have to be myself. I just have to be right here where I am right now. Well, it allows you to be more authentic. You can really show up as you are without these, all these expectations and all this stuff that we're usually bombarded with, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, have you, I know you have this chapter in your book, you talk about setting boundaries and I'd love for you to share a little bit about that with us. I think often boundaries aren't really well understood. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people think, you know, well, I've got, I've got good boundaries, not really understanding, you know, what those could mean for them. Yeah. I mean, I always believe that boundaries actually begin with us, with ourselves. And what I mean by that is, again, it's about that self-awareness piece because if you go into that chronic worrying and ruminating and thinking piece, right, that triggered response, how do we, what does our triggered response look like? Do I avoid things? Do I withdraw? Do I talk a lot? Do I interrupt people? Do I go sit in silence? Do I slam doors? Like what, what is my triggered response? And then knowing that that can pull me into react, that is a react form of reactivity, can pull me into re-traumatizing. So it's really learning how to set a boundary with yourself having self-discipline so you don't get so easily swayed into that direction. Otherwise, you cross the line 
and think about it like you would think about somebody else. Would you want to go and rant and rave at them and come at them a million miles a minute or tell them to hurry up and rush? Well, why would you do that to yourself? Would you sell, would you put doubt on somebody else? Would you have these thoughts about them and then say them out loud? But then why would you do that to yourself? And so I believe boundaries becomes, begins with ourselves. If we're feeling like people are crossing the line, then there might be an aspect in us that is crossing the line. If Mm -hmm. we feel like we're being disrespected, there's an aspect in us that needs to, to, who feels disrespected. So doing that inner work on that, let's say we're using the disrespect piece. Mm -hmm. You just use it as an example, doing that inner work on that will clear that. It will calm. It will bring a sense of energy in so that you can be calm. And then when you calm down, so the more energy you have, the calmer you become, the less energy you have, the more you're going to go into the reactivity. So that's why we want to bring energy in, in to the body. Once you bring that energy in and you bring that sense of, of safety in, people will sense that around you and they will calm down. And I know we want them to we want to tell them what to do. And I'm not saying there isn't an aspect where you would teach people around you what, how you need them to behave. Like I have a rule in my house, not that it's always followed, but the rule is kitchen closed at nine, <laughs> nine <laughs> o'clock. Okay. Because I don't want to hear pots, pans, this, that at 11 o'clock at night, right? That is, that is the boundary there. But if I'm coming at them in a state of reactivity, then it's going to cause all sorts of tension and conflict and disharmony. And guess what's going to happen? I know in my standpoint, they're going to come at me and that little, that space inside of me, that fearful, whatever's unprocessed in me, fear, nervousness, I'm going to give in. I'm going to give in and be like, fine. You know what? I'm done. I'm done do what you want, right? And all of a sudden, there's no boundaries. There's nothing, right? Everybody's doing whatever the heck they want, this and that. But if I take time to be calm and to cleanse is the way I'm going to get there. I'm going to be safe. And then I can have a conversation about the way things work in the house. We can, we can have a dialogue, which would include both sides, both sides feeling like they get to have a say or input. And it just is a little lighter in the delivery. But you can't have those conversations if you're coming at it from reactivity. And then you lose boundaries. And then it feels like you're surviving in your own house. Yeah, that's not good. You know, and, and you can see where that just is like a snowball effect. You know? <laughs> Nobody's getting good sleep. People mm-hmm. are getting crabby. People are bickering. It just gets messy. Oh, I can't live with you. It gets hurtful. So that's why I always believe that I have to first really cleansing myself so I have that energy so I can have those conversations that are respectful. Yeah, we haven't even talked about how it makes people feel too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel dis I feel like I've been disrespected. I, you know, not appreciated. So it could get into this whole big huge mess thing, you know? So it's it's nice to be able to, you know, set these boundaries. And it's interesting when you do this work, when you do the cleanse process, you really get to a point where you're not reactive when other people are having what's going on. And that's such a great example that you had. Yeah. And I think the best thing, and you asked about benefits, is you don't take things as personally. And believe it or not, which seems impossible for some people, and I would have thought it would have been impossible for me, you can let things roll off your shoulders. No way. Yes. (laughs) 
You can. You roll it off because once you start learning that and you start looking at that person, when you're cleansing, you're starting to understand reactivity and you're understanding that it comes from a place of memory, that that person is triggered because they're remembering an emotion that they never fully process that is attempting to be processed. Now I can look at that person and I can say, okay, I understand what's really going on. This isn't about the the sandwich, making a sandwich, okay? This is about maybe somebody who has an unprocessed feeling of feeling uh, rejected or lonely or bored or whatever it is and i can i can see that it's more than this and therefore i don't have to go into that space where i have to prove my point mm-hmm. you're not really joining them where they're at energetically exactly you, yeah. yeah and you're able yeah. to kind of hold your own and and regardless where people are at which i think is really important because you know when we do this, you know, work on ourselves, you know, it's not just, and this is probably a bad analogy, but, you know, when we, we do this work on ourselves, a lot of times when people are in different places, we don't necessarily want to um, bring ourselves maybe down to where someone else is, you know, because then, then all that reaction happens. We really want to keep our, our energy and our work where we, we've been, you know, doing so hard and so diligently to get. Absolutely. And really what, what happens is you become more compassionate. You feel compassion. And again, I mean, these situations, you might, you might walk away or take a breath or do something like that. But when you do, what's nice is you have a system you can turn to. So a lot of times, you know, before I I could walk away and I maybe would talk to myself, right? And that's another reaction. We talk to ourselves, like self-talk, like, well, and we have these conversations. Well, if they, and you're, and you're still carrying on, and even though you've walked away, you're playing this out in your head as if they're in front of you. And so that's, you're still in reactivity. But now what you have is you have a system. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I, I know how to, I know what I can do right now. I can cleanse. And so you go to the cleanse rather than keep rehashing that in your brain over and over and over again. Then when you go back in the house, you're like, you, you know, you're ready to blow because you just spent all these time talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call the kettle black while we're at it, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? But it, obviously, you've traveled this road. And you know, that's how you got this book. You know what it's like, and you're able to bring people through. You know, and I have to ask, like, when we get to this point that we're, you know, we've discussed, hey, we're kind of in our minds thinking about it. How important is surrender at this point? Oh, it's everything. I mean, it's surrender is is a state of non-resistance. So that is that's really where the cleanse is leading you every time. It's leading you to surrender. It's guiding you, is giving you the pathway to surrender. But it's hard to do that right off the bat. It's hard to, you know, when someone says, Oh, just let it go. Don't let it bother you. You know what? They're nothing right? Don't let it bother you. They don't know what they're, you know, people say that, but you're like, yeah, you're right. But then inside you're like, no, I I can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop rerunning it. It really bothers me, really upsets me. I'm rattled. And, and so I find that just doesn't work when someone tells you, just let it go, move on. You're better than them. You know, we have all these statements and what the cleanse does is it, guides you gently through the process so that you can do that. Because I think all of us know inherently inside that that, that would be the, the most beneficial thing you could do for yourself and others is to allow yourself to just remove all resistance and let this healing process occur and really trust. You know, surrender is about trust. And and learning to trust how powerful you are 
but you can't, you'll never discover that if you're holding on really tight and you're consuming your time and your energy and your thoughts with how to not feel. Yeah, because that kind of gets you right back to where you started if you get into that not feeling place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, my goodness, I mean, we could talk all day. I just love your books and the way you approach things. <laughs> what when we talk about, you know, especially when we're talking about emotional detox, because I know we're going to have some other conversations about mm-hmm. some of your other work. Yeah. Um, what do you want our listeners to take away from? Because, gosh, we're in this very unique time in human history. Mm-hmm. I'm sure everyone's feeling like they need a detox from everything, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So what, what steps would you like to leave them to um, take away with? Mm. Well, I think it's important for people to know that when you watch television or you watch social media or wherever you're seeing things, you're watching a lot of reactivity right now. You're not watching feeling or emotions. You're watching reactions. And so you're watching most people are not feeling they're they're re-traumatizing and if you get hooked into that guess what <laughs> you're going to become part of that you're going to you're going to inevitably open yourself up to re-traumatizing yourself and rerunning yourself and and we're all connected that's the reality i mean we're really not separate we're all connected there is no in the big scheme of things, there there is no black and white. There is no, you know, better, rich or poor. I mean, the, there's in the grand scheme of things, we're all one. We're all connected. And so, when you see this stuff, just know that you're watching people who are scared, who are reliving some things. And you can join that, you have a choice, or you can choose to cleanse and to feel what's coming up and be a provider and a resource for healing on this planet, knowing that everybody benefits from that. And some people might need to turn the TV off or have limits on your phone usage or don't look at the news for even just a couple days, take a break so you can feel Know what your numbing agents are. Know how you numb. Do you scroll through your phone? Is that numbing you? If you're not breathing, you're numb. So pay attention to that. Notice if you're, if the amount of time that you're spending doing one activity is, is gone too long. If you're sitting a long period of time, you're not moving your body much, that's probably going to numb you. You're not going to be in a state of feeling if you sit in one position. So little things like that, beginning, making sure you're hydrated is going to help you. Noticing that you're thirsty and making yourself a priority right now. So those are some simple ways that people can just begin to allow their emotions to be processed And know that when you see people, you know, turning to violence or, you know, remember that words are vibration. So they have an impact on people. They, they're like a memory in itself. And so I'm I'm very, even I'm very sensitive to even like looking at signs, you know, what they say on them. I, I have to notice that and If they say something that repeats something, I might have to go cleanse. I might have to say, oh, seeing that video for the 50th time today, (laughs) even though I didn't want to see it, but for whatever reason, they want to replay it over and over again, it it has an effect on on your ability to process. So at some point, you got to turn it off and you got to say, seeing that video makes me feel And you got to go through these steps. I think a lot of that is also honoring yourself, 
Mm. as you're really feeling where you're at with, you know, these different things that come up in our awareness, because I mean, we are so bombarded with so much negativity now more than ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's tough. I mean, I can't watch news all day long. I can watch it for a little bit. I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. The world's still a hot mess. (laughs) (laughs) I will be back checking that out tomorrow. (laughs) It's like, you know, you get to this point where it's like, okay, you you can't let so much of that in because then you start losing your compass, you know? Mm. Yes. And, and patterns are held together by that, the fear. Mm-mm-mm. Well, my goodness. I mean, again, we could talk all day, obviously. <laughs> Where can our listeners connect with you, learn about your books, the work that you do? Because I know that you have coaching sessions available mm-hmm. and also you have a radio show too. I do. I do. So my my books and my coaching are on sherriannaboyle.com. That's one website. And then I have another website called cleanselife.com. And that's my platform because I put the cleanse in my yoga practices and then I record them and they can access all those recordings there. And the way I teach yoga is a little bit, at least I think it might be different. I'm not sure, but um, I put an emotional cleanse in every practice. We, we look at whatever's coming up that day and and then we move through the process. So those um, those recordings are there. I call it cleanse yoga. And uh, is that everything you just asked me? <laughs> <laughs> your radio show, your radio show. Uh, my radio show. I knew there was one more thing. <laughs> yes, uh, that's new. That's going to begin in July. And that's healthylife.net. So if you go to healthylife.net, I am on there now. You'll see you'll see where I'll be um, at 2 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. So you can check that out there. And I also have a podcast. So that's on my website, sherryannaboyle.com. So there are lots of recordings on there as well. Well, I'm looking forward to listening to your show. We're going to be having another talk in the near future about your other books. Well, next one coming up. (laughs) So we've got that. You know, Sherrianna, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Well, thank you, Shariana. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you. And of course, to talk about your book, Emotional Detox, Seven Steps to Release Toxicity and Energize Joy. If you'd like to connect with Shariana again, you can at her website at sherriannaboyle.com for more information. Her book, Emotional Detox, is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And of course, it's available on Kindle. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Marianne airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.